Okay then. the madre and i'm china elizabeth the daughter and welcome to the okay den show we have some special guests with us here on today no. and before we get into it the subject is the importance of second moms yeah the importance of second moms yeah, so yeah. that's what we're going to do we're going to introduce you to the guests that we have here and we're going to start with the second mom who is this young lady in the middle of stuff? i'm the young lady in the middle of stuff <laughs> My name is Sparkle Walters, and I get to be a part of the lives of Tisha in China because yes. I'm their second mom. Not, <laughs> not, I mean, not, not that's, that's not. I no, mean. you're okay. not my second mom. <laughs> you're more like my auntie. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that works too. That's my niece, uh -huh. and that's my oldest sister, Tisha. Right. Okay, then. So, who are they? So, who are these young men? Right. Go ahead. Tell, <laughs> tell, tell, yeah. Nehru, Nehru, tell us who you are. <laughs> Speak up. Well, my name is Nehru. Uh, where, where, are, where you from, Nehru? Uh, I'm from Chicago. Okay. Yeah. And this one is? Well, I'm not Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chicago. <laughs> no. She should be calling him Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Devin. I'm Devin from Chicago. Hey, Devin. Hey, Devin. Hey, hey Nehru. Nehru. Hey, Nehru. How everybody feeling? We feeling all right. Yo. We glad to have y'all here at the OK the Den Shop. No, we I'm glad y'all got us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with that. So y'all are here from where? Chicago. You're here from Chicago. And Chicago. when did y'all get in town? Friday. Friday. So you've been here a few days now. Yes. Yeah. And you came here for what? Let's start with you, not Dominique, which is Devin. Oh, uh, we came we came down here for um the fashion show actually. The fashion show that you hosted. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, Both the, of y'all hosted. I was finna say that Sparkle hosted that I put on. Uh -huh. Well we put it on. Uh -huh. We put it on. We put it on, but she had hosted with the mic. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. I had tried to host and my boys, um, so I used to live in Chicago and I got a chance to meet them when they were in the eighth grade. So they mm -hmm. were about what well, no, seventh grade for you. Eighth grade for you, uh, and now they are twenty two. So that was like age 12, 13 About ten years ago. So about ten years ago. Wow. And wow. I got a chance to do life with them for that time period. Then I end up getting married. Shout out to my husband Khalid Walters. KK. Hey KK. Hey, what's up, KK? KK. Hey KK. And then when I came, you know, I left my, all my wonderful students in Chicago, but I had already. You know, help them grow up, help their moms, get them into manhood and womanhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, these wouldn't let me go. Several of them have not let me go. And so we talk on a regular basis on the phone and talk about when we're going to see each other all the time again. And when I told them about this fashion show, Devin, what you I say? Was on it. I was on it. I'm, I said, I'm going to be there. <laughs> he said he was going to be here. And then a couple of them started talking about they was going to be here. And it ended up being just these two. But when I tell you my joy. Yes has just been over the top i've just been so full that y'all even wanted to come y'all bust up in my space again again and we just been hanging out like we used to it's been so wonderful to have y'all here so Yay. let's get into it nehru she has shared with us the relationship that has been established so when you met sparkle Tell me what that first experience was like. Was she was she quiet? Was she shy? Quiet. <laughs> yeah, was she uh, you know kind of recluse? Like what what kind of person was she? Well, from my, when I met Miss Sparkle or Mama Sparkle, she was always colorful. Colorful. I, always oh. colorful. That's 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 her aura. Colorful, mm -hmm. positive, vibrant, all of the above, and you know, eccentric. Mm, eccentric. eccentric. I he like that. Good vocabulary. <laughs> I like that. But no, I'll never forget when I first. Some people I forget what I met mm -hmm. you know, for the first time. But Mama Spark, I'll never forget. I was about twelve years old. Mm. We was at this place called Battle Hand. That's where we met at. Battle Hand Club for kids. Shout out to Battle Hand, everybody. <laughs> I was. We was in this room. Uh, in this room, it was an elective or extracurricular activity. Mm -hmm. I forgot what it was, but I remember how being there. It was it was the summertime or. 
I remember it's been real hot that year. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it was 2012, 13, Chicago summers had 100 degrees, and that was like the first time I noticed that. I even remember when my sparkle got. I don't know. I know it kind of sounds weird to some people, mm -hmm. but I remember it has to. It's always red and black, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one side was long, one side was no was fade. <laughs> she had on this long <laughs> sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember all this. Is I, I guess I guess I don't know. She just impacted. But you. It was impact, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know how much. Even throughout the years of knowing her, I didn't know how much impact it was she had on our life. But I really sat down and thought about. It, I was just like. I say to this day, I don't know why I would have been or how I would have been like mm. if Mama Sparkle never showed up. Oh, every day. Wow. Every, every day. day. Like, he get tired of me talking about I'm mm. I'm not every saying day. this for the I'm dead saying. Mm. I don't even know who I would have been without her. That's so sweet. Mm. That's so, y'all, this is the first time that? I've been hearing these <laughs> things. Like, this is amazing to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, how does that make you feel hearing it? Um, I just feel like, wow. I'm just so excited to have gotten to be a part of your life, like mm -hmm. that you guys let me, mm -hmm. you know, be a part that you chose. I ran out to Devin, mm -hmm. so you know. <laughs> Why did you run out to Devin? Was he running? <laughs> <laughs> so when I first met her, right, <laughs> we was at an event where it was like Brandon Marshall came through, and okay. I guess it was something for by the hand. I wasn't a part of that program yet, but they called my mom. They like Brandon Marshall, the football player, is gonna be. Over down the street, oh, yeah, you lit. should. Lit. Yeah, you should just. They like you should just go down the street and go go um say what's up to him or something. Yeah. You know, me as a kid, me as a Bears fan, football fan, I was like for sure. So he went did the whole thing. I kind of didn't feel it because I didn't know nobody in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I was new to the neighborhood, and it was a summer before eighth grade. We went to the car. As we was going to the car, she chased my mom down. <laughs> oh my god! It was like. Knocking on the door, she's like, do do do. I'm like, who is he this lady? Like, he looked like he was supposed to be in my class. I'm like, who is this lady? She like, your son need to be in my class. Hey. 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 And they exchanged contacts after that, and then maybe some time later, I went to a new school. I got in a little trouble. They was like, go to this program. Look, I can't end up being right. <laughs> so you ended, up, you ended up in her class and then what happened? This happened. We ended up. <laughs> we ended up. <laughs> Ten years later. Yeah. So what kind of impact did she have on you? Because you didn't necessarily know you were going to be in the class. So once you were in the class, what was your perception of her? Um, From the, like starting off? Uh-huh. I was like, who is this lady and why is she so happy? Why is she, <laughs> why is she just cheesing and... <laughs> Hugging everybody, like kissing on everybody. I'm just like, who is this lady? Why uh -huh. is she just so vibrant? Yeah, I don't like that because because <laughs> you don't see that a lot where we from where everybody like people that's not related to you just mm -hmm. so happy and energetic towards you mm. and want to see you grow. Yeah. So this was like weird for me. Mm. It could have been weird for a lot of other people, but it was yeah. definitely weird for me. Wow. I think that's, that's so cool that you're saying to us that she was abnormal because she was loving. Mm -hmm. And what you were used to were people that were not so excited or not so joyful on a day-to-day -day basis. So it made you a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. that she had so much joy. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And so, Sparkle, when you met these young men, you went after this young man. Why? Why did you do that? Well, so we had a... Um, by the Hand Club for Kids is... Yeah, there's a lot of violence that happens in Chicago, okay. so <clears throat> our goal is to get as many kids in the program to get them off the streets to make sure that they're safe. Mm -hmm. So we, as many young people as I could get that were in my age range, and I was a junior high coach at that time, um, we called like the team leaders coaches or, okay. or team leaders, one of them two. Mm -hmm. I guess I started off as a team leader, leader and when y'all got to high school, I became a coach. Okay. Um, but, you know, we had enrollment quotas and all this kind of stuff and so for me I had a, a big class but I was like we need more mm. we need more mm -hmm. I can have some more mm -hmm. so it wasn't often because the older kids get the, the less you know they want to come to a new program where they don't know people right, right. so um, when I saw him his mom had a little one and she had him I was like oh him Mm. So it was He came towards us So as far as I was concerned He was coming towards me As <laughs> far <laughs> as I was concerned And I don't know Did your mama make you come? Is that how you end up in the Because you yeah. wouldn't like I want to go after that woman <laughs> Yeah she made me come She made she him come made you. Okay And so when your mom made you come And you joined the class You saw how she was So how long was it Before you realized You were enjoying her? 
Do you remember that? That still took some time. Really? That was like it took a good like end of the sem- end of the um sorry. End of the school year. Okay. I was like, okay, this lady like When he yeah. when he realized I was helping him graduate. Yes. Because he was going, <laughs> cause he was not going to graduate. Oh, got it. His mama let me go to and and so one one big part about the program is, and I was very surprised about Chicago, yeah. pleasantly surprised. I thought going, because I went to Chicago to be a part of the solution yeah. when I heard about the the violence and mm-hmm. stuff. And I've been leaving young people. So yeah. I was like, you know, I wasn't married. I didn't have my own children. What does stop is me <laughs> from going to be a part of the solution? Okay. So I went, um, <clears throat> and I was pleasantly surprised to learn that they actually had moms who cared most of them most of them had parents who actually cared yeah. from a distance mm-hmm. you know i kind of had the idea that maybe they it's just had their, their parents lives. weren't in their lives mm. or their parents didn't care yeah but they did they all, all my students had parents who cared mm-hmm. or some a grown person in their life who really cared mm-hmm. so what i got to be was like an extension yeah to their mom it was it's kind of auntie like mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my knees right yeah, yeah. It's kind of auntie like, um, but I'm not sure. Um, I've never had really tight, tight relationships with my auntie, so I'm sure some people do. But I think it might be auntie. They put it on a mom. They put it as they called me second mama mm. because ultimately their mamas and I became really like a, a team. Yeah, mm. a village. We, yeah, we were a village. Mm-hmm. So it was. You know, me and his mama talking on a regular basis about how to help make him successful. And me and his mama mm-hmm. talking about how to make him successful. That's so awesome. when the mamas would get like fed up or tired, they would call me. Yeah. yeah. So when they with uh, Devin in eighth grade, this was the first year I had him. His mom ended up letting me go to the parent conference and oh, deal wow. with the teacher. Mm. And we had a plan, and I would communicate to his mama what the plan was mm. and just execute on it and keep her informed wow so like once and same thing with him like you know when i first got there he was so strong you know he would be horse playing and handling the little boys and they would get serious but it ended up getting him suspended mm. and um so so you was physical <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, yeah okay but when i got there you had a lot of suspensions that i canceled and he earned some more and still okay. got suspended ah. Okay. But he changed, like, and you know, he was, he realized, like, I don't want to keep getting in trouble anymore at some point, and I fought to get him back. And yeah. The, the team leader, the my director, let me bring him back, and after that, like, he was never trying to get kicked out again. Oh wow. Yeah, and Devin, you were faithful after that, like after that eighth grade year, yes. and I went to both of their graduations, eighth grade, because they had. Do we have eighth grade graduation in Texas? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, when I was in school, we didn't have no eighth grade graduation, but yeah. in Chicago, they did. So I went to all my students' graduations, um, right there with the family. Okay. Posted up with the cameras. <laughs> That's you know, good. And walked all the way through high school with them. So Nehru, mm-hmm. Sparkle is now this second mom to you, and in that process of it, did. You automatically gravitate to that? Did you come up with that? Or did you feel like because she was so involved that that should be a role for her? She was so involved that should be a role for her. Okay. I didn't think of it at first. I think I didn't start calling her what my second mom was. To. I was about a teenager, probably like 17. Okay. 18. I don't remember what it just. But when it came out, it just felt natural. She was just that involved. Mm. And were you happy about that? Like what? Was she holding you accountable? Did you feel like somebody was in your business? Like, how did you take it initially? <laughs> how did you take that initially? To be a, to be a mother, you're just going to have to be in your kid's business. Yeah. So that's natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, Did you receive it, though? Were you like, yeah, she could be in my business? Were you like, uh, no? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always, you know, a little pushback at okay. first, you know, mm-hmm. cause, especially early on because she knew to us. But mm-hmm. I remember... Uh, I was I was I was going to some well I was like 17, 17 and a half years old, mm-hmm. and I and I talked to Miss Mama mm-hmm. Sparkle, so she talked to me differently. She talked me down through it and helped yeah, you out. She she helped me out because mm-hmm. I tried talking to other people too, but nobody don't choose the perfect words like Mama Sparkle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not I got, she got that good wisdom. I got that she good, good wisdom. That good wisdom. <laughs> she get that from her older sister. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up my sister. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Then <laughs> another thing about it too, she is honest with you. Mm. She gonna tell you where you messed up. She gonna tell you where you went wrong. She don't even let you feel like you up on nothing. No. <laughs> oh, that's you mean? wrong. You, yeah. When you don't wrong, say that. she gonna let you know where you wrong. Right. But she not gonna wrong. tell she you. She don't say it like wrong. that though. Yeah. But she gonna let you know though. Mm. Like, she oh, let you when come you do to something the... crazy. Like, nah, that was dumb. Now she don't even insult you or nothing. She's like, nah, that. Mm. Now you could be better. She me. lets you come to the conclusion that she was wrong on your own. Not even just like you wrong. She gonna let you. She gonna talk about it with you, mm -hmm. and then she gonna be like, "Now you see that? Do you think he was right in that situation? Mm. No." Mm. <laughs> and so then you gonna answer your own question. Right. <laughs> but great. that's how my mom used to do us. Yeah. Like I remember, you know, I remember when I wanted to. I was living for. I always loved Jesus. Yeah. Daddy gave me Christ from a child, and I remember looking up at him, and I just believed him. I just believed. In the Jesus that he was telling me about mm. and I, I was probably four but daddy proceeded and mama proceeded to teach us about Jesus mm -hmm. and so um, anyway as I was getting older and started you know like junior high and stuff and the kids start going to parties and mm -hmm. yeah you know um, and living color was on you can do what you wanna do mm -hmm. in living color uh, oh, okay, oh, back. Anyway, let's show. right, let's get back. <laughs> they had fly girls on there, you know. So I was coming up um, and wanting to live for Christ, but still wanting to have fun and stuff. And I would ask my mom if I could go to like those little parties, the little junior high parties and stuff. And my mom's question would be, "Well, Sparkle, do, how, do you feel like you could honor Christ at the party?" Mm. And literally, she would stop and wait for an answer. Mm. Well. <sighs> That's what I do when I turn and walk away. <laughs> I turn and walk away, but she kind of did that all the time, and it was always that. Like, um, with Sparkle, I, Mama, I really want to be a fly girl. Those girls are so bomb. Like, you know, um, she was like, you know, well, what kind of clothes do they wear? Okay. Well, Sparkle, you know, wearing those kind of clothes, dancing, do you believe that you can honor Christ like that? How do you believe you can honor Christ like that? And I'll be like, mm, do you know? So I would just turn and walk away, and that that became <laughs> kind of how you know I, I it was questions. Yeah. She, she really just put a question back in my lap to answer. Yeah. So I kind of do that with y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, I ask you questions a lot. Do I ask a lot of questions? <laughs> She I inquisitive. Think you know that <laughs> See, they don't even realize that they're so used to it. Yeah. Like that's just kind of like a part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But yeah. when you say I make you discover it, I'm literally asking you just questions, like because we just that's a part of our conversation. Right. Talk, mm -hmm. question, talk, question, question, talk. You ask questions too. Kind of like a therapist, right. basically. Mm -hmm. Who are therapists? <laughs> they didn't give me no degree. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, Devin. When you think about Mama Sparkle y'all are using that term how was it that she was guiding you through that time like give me a specific scenario or something that you can think about where you know she was giving you some direct direction or guidance and helping you make some choices um start off and it will always be in the picture faith mm. uh, um just help me guide off my faith help mm. all of us guide our faith mm -hmm. um she would always ask us, have you accepted Jesus mm. as your Lord and Savior? Mm. And we'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And somewhere in the Bible where it's like, you could you could say it with your words, but you got to do it with your actions. Mm. Yeah. So we were just saying it with our words. And I know, for example, I was just saying it with my words. Mm. I'm like, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just like, okay. Because I believed in Jesus. Mm -hmm. but it was like, I'm not seeing nothing happen. I'm mm. not seeing no changes. So. I guess he's somewhere around. He just mm, ain't came to me. So yeah. After a while, when I was like going through stuff and like kind of, you know, growing into my manhood, and I'm just like, man, I need to have some faith and mm. you know put it towards something. So yeah. I I started going to church this year and wow, uh, I love it. You know what I'm saying? If it, I honestly always had god in my life mm -hmm. with my grandma yeah but like you never want to really want to go to church with like the old ladies and the, yeah mm -hmm. you know all the older folks there's no kids in there and you just sitting there for two three You're like, hours what they talking about? <laughs> right and you don't know what they're talking about so <laughs> me taking that you know initiative 
and being intentional about going to church, mm. knowing who God was, uh, mm. growing my faith, growing uh, spiritually. Yeah. Started with her. Mm, that's you wonderful. Know? Well, that's not on my grandma, but this the lady that really Walk pushed it. Yeah. You wanted to see yeah. that yeah. the Lord had planted through your grandmother. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. beautiful. So now, when you think about your relationship where of where it is, how has that impacted you spiritually? Like, where is your walk at this point? Um, I think it's still early. Yeah. Um, I was just debating about uh, getting baptized like mm. a few months ago, and I was like, Nah, I'm not ready to do that. And mm. I'm like, It's not up for me to say when I need to be baptized. Mm. Right. It's more of when God tell you, All right, go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. So. The next time the opportunity is, uh, is on the table to get baptized, I'm, I'll just do that. Okay. That's I'm awesome. so proud of you. Yeah. 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 China, China, tell them about you. Tell yeah, them what, tell what you, you just did, China. So I recently just got re-baptized. Um, and yeah, the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart. They were doing it at church. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So I didn't really want to. I hesitated like you did. <laughs> but then I was like, okay, I'm going to be obedient. Yeah. And then I did it. So, and it and was a beautiful great. thing. Yeah, it was. It was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, young man, when you think about the impact that Mama Sparkle has had on you, tell me what was a major change that happened in your life, having her in your life? Because the first thing that comes to mind is positivity. Mm. There's... I don't think I know anybody just as positive as her. Mm. I know positive people don't get it wrong, but yeah. the level of positivity that Mom Sparkle releases mm. is unmatched. That's to this so day, it's unmatched. They be saying some stuff. <laughs> let them oh say it. Take oh it in. God. Just take it in. Let them talk. Wow. Just, let them, just let them do it. <laughs> okay, so come on. <laughs> keep, keep sharing it. Whatever else you want to tell me with that. Okay. That can help me to be positive, too. Mm -hmm. It did, because... Uh, like I always just had negative thoughts. Like my uh, my mouth was majority in a dark place. You mm. know what I'm saying? Filled with insecurity, all types of stuff. So I'm, I'm these past couple of years, I was just changing that around. But mm. the first, I, I think I give a lot of that credit to my sparkle for real. You know? Mm. I think that's so beautiful. What you all are sharing is <laughs> having positive communication, mm -hmm. positive support systems, people. Of older people encouraging you it made the difference for you it made the difference with you with Christ it made the difference with you and your insecurity you heard and saw her consistent pouring into positivity uh, Christ faith positive things that caused you all to say I believe it based on what I see her doing consistently mm -hmm. and it's making you want to be better Mm -hmm. and more positive yourself is that correct mm -hmm. yes and that's what we want the audience to see is that mm -hmm. having this second mom has been such a great influence in these young men's lives and and even though these are men they still need that nurturing from a, a female they still need to hear it from another woman that these things are good and yeah. that it it has helped mold you guys into positive f figures would you agree yes for sure okay so sparkle you share with us too during this process because you said you've affected a lot of the young people can you talk to the audience about some of the mm -hmm. things that you felt that you started to intentionally do once you saw that there was a pattern happening yeah um <clears throat> well i recognized <laughs> that what i recognized was that young people just need they were responding to the love and the um, kindness, yeah. but also the authority. Mm. Like they recognized, like, you know, first they did a kind of thing like, what? Like, hold on, yeah. who is this coming in here? Yeah. Like trying to tell us what to do. Right. But they were, I could find, I found at some point they were really responding to me actually being in, like not being friends. Yeah. I was their friend, but they understood that I was also their covering. I was their authority figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I we worked on respecting not just me, but respecting each other. Yeah. And so they started to 
pass that along. They mm-hmm. wouldn't let people come into the space and be negative. They would be like, no, nah, man, you can't talk like that. Mm-hmm. You can't talk like that to Miss Sparkle. Or mm-hmm. no, she ain't going to allow that. That kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And wow. it started making them have camaraderie. When I would start taking, I would used to try to take out one kid mm-hmm. at a time to hang out with them. But then I had two at one point, And I realized how much more fun they had with each other and me mm-hmm. so then it would become three mm-hmm. you know and it became okay they really enjoy each other mm-hmm. and i get to be a part of making that happen and they're and they're in a safe place so sometimes chicago wasn't always the safest some of the parts that we were in were not always the safest but i could see that they were feeling really safe with me yeah um so that part was really great was learning how to cultivate team relationship and friendship inside of the group but also really getting their parents involved so it was a big deal to me once i realized their parents cared for their parents to really be on board what was going on at by the hand with us and again shout out to by the hand who allowed me to be able to to, um make create these relationships and really nourish them yeah but their parents like we really were a team again Some of their parents were calling me Mama Sparkle. I didn't tell nobody to call me Mama Sparkle. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point I looked up and one of my girls had my name in her phone as Mama Sparkle. Mm. And I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. Mm. And then at some point, it just seemed like all of them started doing that. Mm. But it was really um, a lot of partnership. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Partnership with the organization and the volunteers, and then making them feel like they were family. Yeah. Um, by the way that they treated each other, and again that comes back to home. Shout out Mama, shout out Daddy, mm-hmm. and Wichita Falls, tax, Texas, that didn't allow us to fight. I, my our siblings, mm-hmm. like we couldn't hit each other, we couldn't talk ugly to each other, and so we really thought of each other as friends as well as siblings. Well, yeah. I wanted to create that same environment mm-hmm. in my class, and so. Um, it, it kind of it started happening like you know i could watch them I, we were just talking the other day about y'all fighting like oh, yeah. in the classroom mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. some point mm-hmm. when they got older but by that time i already knew they loved each other mm-hmm. they cared it, and i had learned that it was good to let boys band like fight a little yeah. bit yeah <laughs> not really fight but fight and my volunteers would be like oh, it's sparkle and i'd be like Mm-mm, they good <laughs> <laughs> they good and they would they would they would do that little tussle that boys do and that was something i had to learn about boys yeah because yeah. we had a lot of girls in mm-hmm. our house and mm-hmm. that was not that's a non-option yeah for girls. we don't banter Mm-mm, we don't fight like that yeah. and get up good mm-hmm. girls do not get up good yeah, like that we fight like that some hair <laughs> pop, some hair coming out and i'm gonna be mad at you for five years Basically. you know <laughs> but boys when they do that like they get up and they that's better so yeah. you know they can they can rekindle that friendship quickly and so that's what would happen and we make good times and good memories yeah but it was safe it was real so i was telling them we couldn't have done that if y'all didn't have that kind of camaraderie mm-hmm. yeah the foundation was laid but it was just a lot of team and again when i say second mom it's because they have their moms yeah, yeah. and their moms were like on board with me being a part of their lives and, being, and even being a part of the mom's lives like literally i knew what was going on with both y'all's moms mm-hmm. Um, we could pray. I could pray for both. I prayed with both y'all's moms. We talked about when they were struggling with you, y'all. Y'all talked to me about when y'all were struggling with them. And I was just always praying. I was just always talking to Jesus and always um, trying to get wisdom from him and, and some of the other people that I work with that by the hand. That's um, awesome. It but is. Jesus was, a, was huge for me. Like, I was really wanting y'all to experience Christ mm-hmm. because I didn't know if you had experienced him through somebody. Yeah. So at the end of all of it for me, it's about getting a, a child to, and now men, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> to really love Jesus, yeah. you know, and know that the, he really makes a change in our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's great having, again, that support system when you have someone in your life like that. But the whole key too, with you having the relationship with, with Jesus, you are intentional. Yeah. about making sure that your students and the young people around you knew him as well you were committed to that as well as building relationships with the parents and involving them mm-hmm. to assist with the process and i feel like those who are watching you know again sometimes there are other teachers that are out there like you too and they don't necessarily know how or they may be looking at you going how does she do that yeah but you're giving them the answer it it was your relationship with christ first how you were brought up 
your intentionality to not be just a friend to the young people but to have an authoritative relationship where they respected you you respected them mm -hmm. and then you also included their parents in the yeah. process yeah. so I'm just trying to make sure that they're hearing this yeah. because again when people see these young men calling you mama sparkle I and, know. I love and you. having this kindness about them they're really in awe of how you were able to do that so i'm just wanting to make sure it's really clear of your process yeah mm. Did so it feel clear? um oh yeah For no sure. I, i'm reiterating sure. oh, okay. the clarity that you have communicated mm -hmm. so i'm gonna ask nehru and not dominique but Devin <laughs> again to just kind of share with us some of those different processes even though i've kind of broken it down i want y'all to still reflect on some of those times where you can remember where she was very impactful or even you felt like she was impacting your mom oh man <laughs> um i'm gonna start off with like high school okay i struggled through high school like the whole time mm. because the first year of high school i was dealing with some i ended up losing my cousin through mm. uh battling cancer and oh wow that whole year i was just like i'm not doing nothing i'm not gonna hang with nobody and i'm hanging with the wrong crowd and then it just kept up and i never took accountability for me being in the wrong or mm. you know wrong in myself and it got to the point where junior year it was like you got a chance for because you ain't graduating it wasn't like you may not you not graduate mm. like i wasn't even in the I was even, I was qualified you as even a, close to graduate. I wasn't even close. I was I think I was still qualified as a uh, either a, like later freshman or like beginning sophomore, mm. or something like that. So I was like bad. Mm. And she was like, "You got to train schools. You got to train schools." I'm I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna change schools for. I want to be with my friends. This and that. Mm. But then it got to the point. Where it was like, nah. I want to graduate. I'd rather be graduating by myself then mm. all my friends go out they graduate and I'm still at school yeah. but what so. what clicked that mindset though because you had to change your mind to want that what happened with that we just talked about it like she was like your pride you, you, you know that pride mm. is killing you and mm. that's something I've been working on uh, to this day just my pride mm. um and I'd be like man I'm not doing that because I don't want to you know feel embarrassed I don't mm. want to feel like you know and I just had to just let it go and just like who cares? Let it be. Right. Who cares? Let mm, it be. So. That's so good. Not Dominique. <laughs> Not Dominique. <laughs> Devin, that is amazing. Seriously, because again, for a young man to humble himself, number one, mm -hmm. that is huge. And that's going to speak to so many young men because again, to actually admit that I was prideful and then say, you know what I can't be concerned about what I'm feeling they may respond to they may make me feel embarrassed I can't be worried about that I need to graduate yeah. they're not gonna be there when I make this decision when they've gone on and I'm still at school right you know what I'm saying so to do that I applaud you for that you so did. make sure you keep sharing that testimony with other young people because so many people take the easy road out because of pride yeah. but they end up regretting it later so thank you for sharing that. Come on, Nate Ru. <laughs> tell me what happened with you. Hey! With you. <laughs> that was wrong. Right. That was wrong. <laughs> little boy. Little boy. Was so <laughs> boring. She got so boring. You know boring. snap snaps on me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a situation where you had to make some choices or where you felt like she had really impacted the process and maybe had to bring your mom in. Well, my mom was always they every step of the way because I have one of those really over overprotective mom. Mm -hmm. I be trying to tell her I'm going to be good. I'm going to be straight. She ain't, she ain't hearing that from me. Mm. But when she talked to Mama Spark, but Mama Spark was just like what Mama Spark said. She was on the phone at 15. <laughs> By the time we got done, she was like, you know, I had a cool three. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. But she, but she won't listen when I tell her I'm good. But when Mama Spark would tell her she, she, I'm good. She listened she, to that. She, she listened. She believe it. Mm. She will calm down. She just be cool. Mm. So Mama Spark was always empathic. Like, mm. like I said earlier, I didn't. I didn't always know it. Mm -hmm. uh, really, click for me when I just sat down and thought about it. Mm. Cause I'm the type of person that just kind of be experiencing life and not really thinking about. It. But when I sit down and think about, it, I'm like, dang. Mm. I specifically did a lot that I ain't even know. I'm just 
sometimes I, I'm really a go with the flow type of person. But when I understand how the flow was moving mm. and how the way she Man, was moving with the car, deep stuff. <laughs> She was moving with the current. <laughs> she, was with the current. <laughs> she was possibly controlling the current. Yeah, that, I was possibly know? controlling it. Okay, then. <laughs> oh when I sat down, think about, I was like, she did. She did a whole lot more than I even realized. And mm -hmm. I always knew she did a lot. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I didn't even think about the impact, mm -hmm. the the deeper layers into it. It's just like, dang. Even to this day, now you know, now that she in Texas, we still in Chicago. And now I kind of want to model myself out the her love and not protect uh, mm. positivity. Mm. So now I got I'm getting to a point where I'm a little bit closer to my family and like that's so good. And I love the kids in my family, so I'm trying to express that same love, mm. trying to express that same wisdom. To so them. yes, talk about that. That's what's amazing. Mm -hmm. So both of them, he has started to deal like intentionally with the children in their lives, mm. like the cousins, and talk yeah. about that, you guys. Cause that has that has blessed me. Mm -hmm. um, that has blessed me. You want to? Yeah. yeah, you go since you were on right. that. Go ahead and jump into it first. <laughs> Them cousins. Them cousins. Yeah, I love my family, <laughs> especially the kids though. But I, I, me, I'm the type of person I never forget what it means to be a kid. You know how playful I was and mm -hmm. those moments of oh man, I'm just a kid. You ain't you ain't gonna be hurt. Stay in the mm. child's place and all that, but mm -hmm. when my Mama Sparkle came around, she gave us the place to be her. She, mm -hmm. like, like she said, she talked us through it. Through it. She wasn't just uh, yelling at us or assaulting at us. She ain't never really yelled. It. She ain't never yelled. <laughs> she never talked really. through it. She never yelled. She never yelled. I'm over here saying really, like, no, nah, she never yelled. Mm. Point oh. blank period. She ain't never yelled. We don't but have that in common. At <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> but, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> my mama didn't yell at us my mother did not yell at us so she talked to us oh man but she used she, she, she used she used perfect I say perfect words and then it was how she was using it too mm. cause it, some people could say some people could, can say impactful things but her delivery was on point with it too so she not only knew what to say but also how to say it mm. you know so I wanna bring that back to you know my little cousins I, I just wanna I just want them to know that you need to talk to even my even my dog because you need to talk to somebody about something. I uh, listen. Mm -hmm. I got big ears. Not literally, but I'm always wanting to listen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's beautiful. Because it, it means a lot to be heard. You, by just listening to somebody, you can honestly yeah. be saving a life for yeah. real. Wow, wow. it's true. Oh. So true. <laughs> where's your that's Where's your snack? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on. Not Dominique. Not Dominique. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, recently, I noticed that my little cousin and my little cousin, my niece, my brother, they all were born the same year. Um, so they were going into high school. And I'm like, I got to guide them in some way because nobody got a chance to guide me. I have an older brother and an older sister, but nobody was like, high school is going to be like this, it's going to be like that, do this, do that. I never really had that. So... With my brother and my uh, nephew, I mean not nephew, excuse me, cousin. My cousin. Mm -hmm. He's my cousin down the street, and you know I gotta get my brother wherever he's at. Right. And I picked what them up. What age are they? Oh, they're fourteen. Okay. They're fourteen. Um, and I bring them to my house. We we talk. We go over devotion. Um, same thing Sparkle did with us. From Sparkle, she just I always put God in our life. So I try to incorporate God in her life. Mm -hmm. um, I never try to force it on them. It's because it was never forced on us. So yeah. I definitely try to uh, put that put that in their life and ask them about certain things. And um, I just keep them aware of, like, what's going on in the real world because we never get to show that to the kids because you got to be a kid. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. And I try to tell their parents, like, my mom and my auntie, I'm like, look, these some big boys. They can't, you can't hide them from the world yeah. forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In no time, so sure. they may be, like, six feet 200 something pounds yeah. they gonna be big like yeah. so you gotta let me just take them out show them the world a little bit and if they need if they got any questions they need help with anything they can call me mm. just the other day for the first time as much as I've been working on my brother and like getting him to talk more and mm -hmm. you know be more open he called me the other day he was like Devin why mom, why mom tell me she wanna cut my hair I'm like <laughs> I'm like bro 
We'll talk about that later. Like, don't don't but worry you were about excited it. Excited that he called. I'm, I was just more excited that he called me mm-hmm. with his concern and his problem, mm. and he knows that I'm his go to. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I'm working on him, uh, my cousin, my my niece. Um, those three are fourteen. Um, that's good. My, my that's other co- my other nephew, my two ne- my two nephews, and I got two babies. Uh, Two babies. Not two babies. My, my <laughs> sister babies. My sister babies. <laughs> <laughs> my sister babies. I, babies. I, I missed that memo. <laughs> yeah, his sister's baby. Yeah. But That's great. I, I want to take it further than just like being my family. Uh, I really want to start uh, working with youth like from like the ages of like 12 to probably 18. Mm-hmm. Like middle school type or middle school to high school. And I think I could probably really impact them because I'm like I'm still young yeah they'll understand mm-hmm. from me yeah. you know what I'm saying they look at the older people like they don't know what they talking about you know so I want to you know be close in age to them while I, as much as I can yeah. while I can yeah and just guide them as much as I can that's beautiful it is and to hear that impact China what do you think when you hear them having that impact like that on young people what does that do? How does that make you feel? Like thinking about your childhood and how you needed that. Yeah, um, I think it's great. I think a lot of younger people need just younger people yeah. in the same area that they're in, same life experiences that they're going through. Just um, someone that will understand them and really take the time to dive into them and mm-hmm. hear what they're going through. I think it's great. And it's a gift because I personally. <laughs> don't want to do that <laughs> so it's great for people who have that heart <laughs> who have that heart and genuinely want to be there for the kids because that's just not me so that's great <laughs> i love that yeah but i'm um, even in that so what what i as y'all are talking it what's coming to me is the ministry of presence mm-hmm. amen um, being there what, like you know at some you didn't even realize at some point that the impact of me just being there Mental. all the time mm-hmm. <laughs> i was there all the time yeah. like for all stuff that y'all were doing but don't tell me you doing anything we're there yeah me and my crew yeah. you know my crew was y'all support people. Mm-hmm. yeah so that the goal was for for everybody to feel supported and loved and seen um and to feel a part and to see you guys wanting to like I was like, you like babies? You know, he just, <laughs> all these pictures of his little cousins, he's starting to take and hang out with him yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, it's just the ministry of presence that you, it, and it seems like it clicked mm. in them at different times. Mm. Like it, it clicked, when it clicked in Devin, when I tell you, he started taking full advantage of our support mm. and all the team members, it clicked. Something, it's like a light went off and he realized, like these people are here for me. Mm. Like I want to, Okay, I'm gonna do my part, yeah. and, and him too. Like it's just, it's it was it's a different way that it has clicked in both of them, but it has clicked, and all we have been is consistently present. Wow. Um, and you know, I'm so happy now. As much as I miss you guys, and I, and I mean, I bless the Lord that y'all are not trying to let me go. Like to get to be here with China, because I used yeah. to always think it's the same way I felt with my little sister Vanity when mm-hmm. I was in college and I wanted to go mentor young people, and I was like, they the same age as my baby sister Vanity, and I end up going home mm-hmm. to help raise her when she went to high school, so she wouldn't be without a sister. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when I went to Chicago at some point I was like my niece and my nephew my nieces and nephews are the same age as these kids that I'm serving mm. and, and the Lord um, let allowed me to rest and told me that I would have my time mm. because right now the Lord had given all y'all good moms mm. Crystal my sister Crystal has sons that are y'all's age and um, she's a beautiful mom and then you you know you were beautiful my I, I could see you pouring a lot into them and i was like and these kids just they need a little bit extra mm. yeah. and the lord let me know i was gonna get my time with my own nieces mm. and nephews so like right now for me to get a chance to be here with you mm-hmm. it's just giving me so much life that's why i be thinking you my sister <laughs> Yeah. Why? Look, Iris, I love it. Iris, Iris, does she know we on the podcast? Nah, this is hilarious. Don't. That's so funny. So this is another one of my students that called. She's so not happy that she's not here right now. <laughs> but um, talk to them. They like they're not. Shout out, Iris. Shout out, Iris. Pirates. I love you. <laughs> 
But now I got my niece and my boys here. Mm -hmm. And I be having to remember y'all are men now. Yeah. They're twenty two. But I'm just I'm just blessing the Lord that he he had the Lord has not blessed my wound yet. I only been married two years uh now, but I but he's allowed me to be able to pour into so many other young people mm -hmm. and that has given me so much life amen and that y'all are here with me they're staying with me for a whole week they came and helped with the fashion show on sunday fashion show with the star show <laughs> oh, okay. where are you um <laughs> where are you outreach so they came and they helped and they served and they just been hanging out with me and they're here with me tonight just because they just want to hang out. And I just love it. They want to meet my family. They were so happy to meet my sister. No, it was happy to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just part of it. <laughs> um, happy to meet my niece. Just because any extension of us, they're just happy to meet uh, because it just feels like we're a part of each other's lives. Yeah. And so I pray that this ain't the last time. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I love you guys so much. I'm so excited about you being here and what God is doing in y'all's lives, I'm continuing to pray. I, I never stop praying. Mm -hmm. I never stop praying. I never stop praying for you either. I whenever never stop praying for you. Whenever we get off the phone line, like we're a car. Like we on a set schedule now. Okay. Because <laughs> we was just not calling. We, we weren't They're calling. On a set we schedule. Like, What's your day? My day is the second Saturday every month. <laughs> okay. Right? What's your day? My Saturday is... <laughs> My Saturday. He, it's every fourth Saturday. He don't know. <laughs> he don't know. It's every fourth Saturday. I don't know what he got going on, but it's every fourth Saturday. I love every that. Month. Yeah. But so every time we and I was just call anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David calls anytime. Jaden calls anytime. But Iris' privilege is different. She just <laughs> y'all know Iris. Iris I know made know her own yeah. privilege. Iris made her own privilege. So. Okay. Definitely anyway. did. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So I just um love you guys. Thank you so much for all the kind words. So beautiful. Love you, too. you know we love you. Love you. Oh, no, thank you for letting me hang out with you. <laughs> she be making me look beautiful. So, <laughs> <Good>. Okay then. <laughs> well, this is what we're gonna do. As we're wrapping up, we're gonna all share what we are okay with. Okay, okay and so with. we're gonna start with Nehru. When you think about what you've heard today and mm -hmm. all of the conversation that we had, tell us after listening. What have you learned or what have you come to know over these years knowing Sparkle? What are you okay with? What am I okay with? Mm-hmm. I'm okay with her being what? I'm okay with our relationship being what? I'm okay with whatever it is that you're okay with. What is that? Hmm. I'm okay well. You know, moving back to Texas. Okay. <gasps> it was hard for us. I'm like, man. That was hard. I, it, it was that hard. was hard. Wow. Like, it was hard. That's all, that's, I don't even mm -hmm. know the proper word for it. I remember uh, wow. meeting her husband with, you know, when he was like a fiance. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, talking to him. I was like, man, so you really take a sparkle from him? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was uh -huh. like, yeah, I know y'all going to miss him. Like, yeah, yeah, we going to miss him. But I remember we had like a whole, like a conference type of thing, you know, where she want us wanted all of us to meet him. Mm -hmm. He met us. It was good. I was, you know, after talking to him a little bit, I was like, you know what? It's time for... Because we, we 18, 19, 20. Yeah, we was mm -hmm. grown. We was grown. She did her part. Sometimes yeah. you just got to be ready to lead and that's ready if you ready or not. That mm -hmm. that that's got to be left. Mm -hmm. So it was like... Wow. You know, live your life. Be happy. Mm -hmm. It's your husband. And it was be, like... You deserve it. This is yeah, like you the life she lived right now. The way I look at it, it was well deserved. Mm. It was well deserved. Cause you know, like long ago, with well, your mom get like a partner or something, and you like, man, who is this dude? <laughs> <laughs> that was who he is. <laughs> but it was like when we met him, it was like, oh, never mind. He, she in good hands. Yeah. Like, mm. It didn't feel like you know we had to like check him out or mm. you know it just felt natural. Like that's so okay, great. she good, you know. And she deserved it, you know what I'm saying? As much as she poured, in, poured into us, and she didn't have to. Yeah. Like, at all. Like, she poured into not only us, but our 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 parents, mm. like our mothers. And mm. sometimes even people close to us. So, yeah, yeah it was it was well-deserved. Uh, I'm glad she came back to Texas doing her thing. Hey. We here now to see her. Yeah. <laughs> We always That's gonna so come back and visit. That's what's up. Can I have something else too? Yeah, like, come one on. What <laughs> thing I learned about life though is everything is connected. Mm. Everything is connected. So just being, just having Mama Spark, just being present. She's still impacting people in Chicago. They might not even know it because mm. 
If you impacted me, and with that impact, if I can impact others, everything is connected. So imagine, <laughs> imagine that one impact wasn't that. Mm. And then if I can impact others with the with the sparkle impact, who can they impact with <laughs> the, the sparkle, sparkle impact? Sparkle impact. Sparkle impact. Sparkle impact. Sparkle impact. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, just remember fun. life is connected and you're not just doing one thing and mm. it just be done. Life had this ripple effect. Mm. You know? I remember one thing we was little that uh one of the songs like we're all part of God's body. Mm. Every organ make the body function. Mm. The heart does its job. The brain does its job. Mm -hmm. I guess we get to carry us out foot. Everybody have a job. There's mm -hmm. no one above all or nothing. You know. Mm -hmm. Even though you got some authority. Yeah. Parts in that, but. That's good stuff. Like everything's connected. That's mm. some good stuff, Nehru. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he was okay with me coming back to Texas. <laughs> what are you okay Aww. with, Sparkle? Man, I'm okay with how this whole story is playing out mm. and how God's providence. So, who was which one of y'all talked to me about coincidence or uh, yeah. fate? That was you? I think it was me. That asked me that. And I said, no, I don't believe in coincidence. No, he asked no, yeah, yeah, I don't We talked yeah. about it all the time. Because I asked, do you believe in accidents and coincidence? Mm. I said, no. Nope, I believe in providence mm. that God is orchestrating everything well. to His glory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so oh, that's right. So I'm I'm okay with how the Lord has brought this full circle um, for me and even for them. Yeah, you know because He was the one that gave me that heart to go towards these people that I didn't have nobody in Chicago. Mm. My family was really looking at me cross-eyed, mm. like, what the heck? <laughs> Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Lord had to settle my mother in her spirit to even allow me to go. I was grown, but I needed her blessing because I trusted the Holy Spirit in her. And uh, he and He let me go. And I thought, okay, so this is going to be my life, Chicago. But then the Lord said, no, that time is up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And come back. And then just for you got for you to feel that release, um, that's really that mm. makes me be able to breathe in some mm. kind of way, you know. Um, and that you even feel like my man is amazing. <laughs> yes, he's amazing. <laughs> I'm okay with that, and I bless the Lord with it. And I'm happy y'all even have got a chance to hang out with him mm -hmm. and see his manness, you know, experience <laughs> his manness in this time. Uh, so I'm okay with what the Lord has done with us and how he's brought this full circle and what I'm seeing the growth in you seeing the relationship with Christ in you um, grow. I'm just okay with what God is doing. Amen. Amen. All right. China, what are you okay with? You ain't gonna let Not Dominique go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming back to Not Dominique. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm okay with having my auntie Sparkle back yeah. now. Yay. They got to experience her. I experienced her a little bit when she would come back visit when I was younger. I do remember us going I think it was like your seminary. Mm -hmm. I would come school. pick. I tried to come pick you up a few times. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Because I knew I needed to hang out with you more. Yeah, it just yeah. was trying to make it happen. I remember them times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now we get to spend a lot more time together, so I'm just happy about the relationship we get to grow now. So yeah. Amen. Yay. Amen. Okay, come on, Devin. Um. I'm impressed. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm impressed. Not Dominic. Let's go. So I'm okay with. Uh, God allowing people in my life mm. more and spending their time and going because I think especially now with social media with everything like you said mm -hmm. being connected mm -hmm. you feel like you can always reach somebody at any time yeah. anywhere so like when people come in your life and they go just let them go you know yeah and since I've been going to church I've just meet, been meeting people left and right left mm. and right left and right and they have been very helpful in my uh, growing process knowing the Lord mm. and uh, just being great being a great person and I try to get out to my younger siblings and whatnot yeah. and any young person I see I'll just be like hey like if I seen them grow up down the street like I try to try to talk to them and be like look honestly you don't have to be nothing but a good person you know what yeah. I'm saying just do that um, but I think it, it definitely starts with the parents and how they educate. You know, I, I don't want to be like you know trying to 
tell nobody how to be a parent mm-hmm. but I try to let them know I'm like look you just gotta teach him how to do this teach him how to be good like just a good person and he'll be fine cause I think with our parents like we just have overprotective parents mm. and they never knew how to really show love mm. and support because they were so focused on protecting us mm. like nah don't do this don't go over here don't, mm. don't be down that street don't be at the parties this mm. night. I mean and, cause in Chicago there's yeah. you know the there's real fear mm-hmm. of their young black boys not coming home. Mm. Right? So, you know, it's some kind real. of justified. Mm. That's and real. That's definitely justified. And, you know, yeah. we've lost a lot in our mm. class alone. Mm-hmm. We've right. lost a lot of siblings. I mean, not siblings, but, I mean, classmates, siblings, but yeah. students, you know, so they're seeing that. Mm-hmm. And mo- many, many mothers in Chicago know anything can happen at any time. Wow. Well, so, yeah. yeah. I think yeah and I think they just they still working on it like I know with my mom I'm still working on it with her just like you know calming down and yeah. like I said it's definitely justified it's absolutely justified but you gotta put faith in something yeah. you know what I'm saying Amen. so when I that's when good. I walk when I walk in my faith I walk uh, with the Lord and I'm yeah, just like that's good. you know what I'm, I'll pray before I leave if I feel uncomfortable going somewhere I may not just go there but I always pray um and that's what my faith is and I try to put uh, some faith into my younger ones to help them grow put some faith in my mom my my aunties and just let them know like look they're good you know what I'm saying um, just just pray about it whatever you got going on just pray about it so that's so good <laughs> wow well I'm okay with having two new nephews hey. yeah. that's what I'm okay with is uh, <laughs> let's go I nephews have, <laughs> enjoyed you guys so so much and just to hear your processes of getting to this place and the whole foundation of the relationships and where you are now that blesses me mm-hmm. tremendously and so that's what my prayer is that those that are watching will take heed to the instruction that you've heard today on how this process was um, processed and uh you can follow this same process. You can pray to the Lord, have a relationship with Him, get that inside of you to be able to share with others, and then you can build a relationship with these young people, standing firm, being authoritative as well as respectful, and then getting to know those around them so you can build the relationships with them as well. So with that being said, China, how can the people watch us on a regular basis? You can watch us every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. We're on every Wednesday morning at 9 Uh a.m. And so we started out with this being the second mom, the importance of the second mom. But then it ended up being the the sparkle sparkle impact. impact. I know, that's right. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So so if you've had someone to impact you or you know of another mom or a a person that has influenced your life, leave a comment and tell us about that process and how uh, that person has been an influence in your life and what that has, you know, what has transpired in that process of knowing that person. I've said process a lot today so so this hashtag process okay then but uh, we're about to laugh yeah but make sure you like comment and subscribe too yes all that good stuff yep. so guys how we end the show we all say together okay then body in okay then body in okay so then. on three one two three okay, okay then body in